Horus. One morning, Mr. Catherick strode gleefully to the shed. My dearest engines, it is... A most exciting day, sir? Walter interrupted cheekily. Winnie stifled a giggle. Well, yes, Mr. Catherick replied, disarmed. It seems Suddery is not the ripe, budding harbor we'd hoped it would be. As such, we are planning big changes and shall extend our railway south to Brendam. Walter and Winnie exchanged worried looks. Don't mistake me, sir, Winnie ventured. I'm sure this is good for our railway, but on top of our regular work, it may prove too much. I heartily agree, Mr. Catherick smiled. That is why I have acquired a new engine to assist with the project. He shall arrive in the coming days. How exciting, Winnie beamed. I'd temper that excitement till you meet him, Walter cautioned. The new engine, whose name was Horace, arrived some days later. Manager wasn't kidding about big changes, Walter marveled. Winnie had to agree. Horace had bulky side tanks, cylinders that seemed swollen, and a huge bunker. Even his nose past which he looked down upon them, was rather large. Unsurprising, he sniffed, that I was brought here. I'm sure you two do your best, but you're really rather... Mm, delicate. Stand aside and leave the heavy work to me. There'd better not be any heavy work, Walter snarled. This is a light railway. Mind you don't ruin our rails. I quite like them as they are. Horace paid no mind. He hissed away to fetch the workmen and trucks. Darting through the countryside is a Rhine. The railway crosses it via a small wooden bridge. It was later that day when Winnie brought her passengers across it. She was thinking about Horace when she suddenly bounced and shook. Oh, she cried, what was that? The rails were dented and crooked. Mr. Catherick inspected them with the workmen. It wasn't long before he returned to address his engines. The problem is you, Horace, he sighed. Your tanks and bunker put a great strain on the rails. When full, that is. For the safety of everyone, you must run at half capacity. The very idea, Horace gasped. How am I to do the work of three engines with a common fireplace's equivalent of coal? At first, Winnie found it humorous. Careful today, your case does make you seem rather delicate. Y y yes, Horace stammered. I'll take care. Oh, yes, C -c great care, y yes. Horace puffed timidly away, muttering nervously. Winnie was bewildered. It's like he's an entirely different engine. I reckon, Walter smirked, he must feel half the engine he once was. Horace's strange new behavior continued for several days. Walter couldn't have cared less, but Winnie kept a watchful, concerned eye. Poor Mr. Jones was having an awful time. He was a failed fireman from the Sodor and Mainland Railway and had hoped for a fresh start on the Wellsworth and Suttery. Alas, he couldn't cut it as a signalman, nor as a guard. However, another chance was inbound. Jones, Mr. Catherick called from his office. Horace's fireman is ill. Oh, uh, a shame, sir, Jones bumbled. But uh, uh, I'm no doctor, sir. No, Mr. Catherick sighed, exasperated. But you were a fireman, weren't you? 
Get steam in him, quick as you can. Jones's face lit up. He hurried to the shed, eager to show his mettle. When the driver arrived, he found Horace near the bunker, steaming very well. How are you, old boy? Magnificent, Horace declared, ready to stop dallying and lounging like some engines. Winnie didn't reply. She just eyed him suspiciously. Well, blow me down. He's back to his old self. Well done, Jones. Oh, well, we're happy to do my bit, Jones bumbled, smiling. Farewell, little one, Horace wished. I must be off. The future of our railway depends upon me. A short time later, Mr. Catherick came running. It's a calamity! Horace has fallen into the Rhine! We must go to the rescue! A precarious scene awaited them. The bridge was a mess of splintered wood and broken rails. Horace sat bunker first in the Rhine, gazing helplessly up. Walter, trapped on the other side, was working hard to remove the debris. You were meant to expand our railway, not destroy it, you great clumsy engine, he fumed. Uh, I'm s -s so s sorry, Horace sniveled. I don't n know what h happened. The b bridge, it j just... Uh, sorry, sir, Mr. Jones confessed to Mr. Catherick. His tanks and bunker were only half full. I thought he needed a top-up. I suppose it doesn't help that we didn't tell you of Horace's case, Jones, Mr. Catherick sighed. But the most pressing issue is rescue and repair. We need all hands on deck. It took some time to clear the mess and get Horace back on the rails. Take him to the shed for inspection, Mr. Catherick told Winnie. Walter and the men will get started on the bridge. It wasn't your fault, you know, Winnie whispered gently as they started away. W w w won't go out uh, uh, again. Only r r ruin things, Horace trailed off, staring at the remnants of the bridge. As she pulled him home, Winnie was more concerned than ever for both the state of the railway and its number three. <laughs>